Well, a new Disney trailer just dropped and it is such a prescient example of what I've been talking about lately. We need to have a look. Three, two, one. Astra! I'm here, I'm here. Whew, just uh, one second. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> Once upon a time stood Rosas, the most magical kingdom, founded by a king with the power to grant wishes. You are their handsomest, most beloved king. You're right. I am a handsome king. I'm so nervous, I think I'm going to explode. My best friend, the king's apprentice. Is my mouth drooping? I feel like it's drooping. Asha, come with me. The wishes of Rosas. Wow. People give their wishes to me, and I grant the wishes I am sure are good for Rosas. Some of these will never be granted. Not some. Most. They deserve more than... I that. decide what everyone deserves. So I look up at the stars to guide me. I wish. And throw caution to every warning sign. Oh, you spoil us with your magic. I didn't do it. What? Last night, I made a wish on a star. Uh... And the star answered. I'm talking. I am talking. Ha! Who knew my voice would be this low? I believe I have just been threatened. Who would dare threaten you? I have no response to that. So <laughs> there is a traitor amongst us. Find the Asha. It's a dead end. With unsanded mahogany. Yeah. Oh, good find, Valentino. My butt found it. I started this. I have to finish it. So I make this wish. What are you hiding? Oh, nothing. And nobody. What is going on in there? Okay, ladies. Your wings can fly. Okay, I think we get the picture. <laughs> A little quiz. If you follow me, do you understand what's going on here? So, like I said, this is this is some pretty good, pretty good propaganda. And the trick to propaganda is to realize that it's propaganda and see the narratives underneath that it's trying to indoctrinate into you, so that you can be free of the effects of propaganda. Um, so, it's called wish. Now, wishes um, are people's wants, <laughs> the things that people want. And so if we go through it again, let's turn the old volume down right from the start. Let's go from the start. So this chick's like AOC. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Disney version of AOC. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So you've got the king. The king is a white guy. And he has the power. He's got all the resources. He's got all the yeah resources, money, whatever, goodies, Apple products, shoes. <laughs> and he doles them out to the people. And like magic. It's just magic. It doesn't come from anywhere. He just wills it into existence. Grant wishes. He grants wishes. You so he gives people the things that they want. Handsomest, most beloved king. You're right. I am a handsome king. And he's up himself, and he's a bit of an asshole. <laughs> I'm so nervous, I think I'm going to explode. So she's My obviously friend, going into the, the castle to do something. Blah, blah, blah. And she finds Whoa. out the inner workings of the system. The inner workings of the system are that people make wishes. People give and he has, assuming... assuming he has unlimited magic. He has unlimited capacity to give people their wishes, to give them what they want, to give them the resources that they need. And I read the wishes I am sure are good for Rosas. So he goes, everybody wants things, but not everybody wants things that are good for the, for the kingdom, for the society, for the civilization you live in. And so it's up to me to decide whose wants get fulfilled uh, because... Not everybody, what everybody wants isn't necessarily good for the bigger picture of everybody. Now, the funny thing with propaganda is it'll make you think that truth are lies. So what that concept right there is actually the actual truth of reality. Not 
not everything that everybody wants is good for the long-term prosperity of the kingdoms, the civilization. So it's actually true. But because he's previously said, yeah, I am a good-looking king, he's come across as a bit of an asshole. And this will never be granted. Not some. Most. The most will never be granted. So they get the character that says the truth and when they say the truth in a menacing way or they, they do other little character things that make you hate them, then you start hating the truth. And so this is what I've been talking about, especially in the Lewis C.K. video, is lefties anthropomorphize the laws of nature. So scarcity of resources is a law of nature. That is part of the reality that you live in that nobody can escape. Not, there's not enough of anything to satisfy anybody. And I'll tell you why. Even though we can make the world objectively more wealthy, people pursue relative status. Which, And I've said this before, what that actually means in practice is that we could all be so objectively wealthy that we live in our own private islands. No, fuck it. We could live in our own private planets, but people would still be jealous and envious of the guy that could afford two. <laughs> So it's relative status that drives people. And so even though in this modern world we're all wealthier than the aristocrats a thousand years ago, it doesn't matter. People are still striving because it's the relative status relative to everyone else that drives people. And so because the status hierarchy is relative, it means there are never going to be... It's, it's, it's like... It's like what what came before the Big Bang if there was no time. It's one of these questions that's like so mind-bendingly like doesn't even make sense, you know. Um, there are no there, there's not enough resources in the world to satisfy equalizing equalizing everyone at the top of the status hierarchy because it's a status hierarchy. It is unequal by nature. You can't, you know. Leftists try to equalize. Well, that's what they say anyway. That's the propaganda, but they end up inverting it. Um, but it's still an, an inverted hierarchy is still a hierarchy. When people pursue relative status, equalization is impossible. It's like it's just it's it's a completely bunk concept. So anyway, the point being is there is enough there are never enough resources to satisfy people's desire for a equalization of relative status. And so the evil white guy, it's nothing's by accident. The evil white king, he grants the wishes. He doles out the resources. He says, you can do this, you can't do that. You can have this, you can't have that. And he's we've established he's a bit of an asshole. And it, he's here with all his magic and his potions and his machinery of civilization. And he has to make the decision on what wishes are, even though I hate this phrase, for the greater good of the kingdom or not. Um, not some. Most. 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 And so he says that in the evil villain language. So he's obviously the villain because the only reason if you've got unlimited magic, and once again, this is all the magical thinking of the childish left. It's just magical thinking. That's all it is. Um, because I've just explained why it's impossible. It's impossible for everybody's wants to be infinitely fulfilled. It's an impossibility. So when you want to believe in impossible things, it's magical thinking. And we've got a show about magic. Who would have thought? More than I decide what everyone deserves. The evil guy, yes. You have to be evil to not give everything to everybody all the time forever. So I look up at the stars. And she, she goes I to the stars. Wish. She wishes. Wish. She makes a wish. And, you know, often magic and wishing, you know, it's it's like your emotions. So she... If, if you want to translate this out of propaganda into real world, the king's like me saying, well, logically, this doesn't make sense. And she's like, yeah, but I'm not a logical. I'm a magical thinking, intersectional young black woman. And my emotions say differently. <laughs> um, so she starts doling out all the magic to the people of the kingdom and she becomes the enemy. No, my voice would be this low. Oh yeah, and you got a couple of like there unfunny is a moments. Traitor amongst us. Find Great. So yeah, so that's that's basically the story. Um, he's got all the power to grant all the wishes, and he doesn't want to because he's just an evil white guy. And the uh, this is a you know Disney for the woke era because Marxism, all leftism, you know, really is a is a false narrative a socially constructed so like a group happy clap wishful think social construction into uh false promises so you, you promise something to somebody that's 
false or doesn't make any sense. You, know, you get people are believing in impossibilities. Um, so all the leftism is a is a false promise that they can be free of the laws of nature and scarcity is one of the laws of nature as I've explained. So original Marxism, economic Marxism was you know baited into false promise of freedom from the law of scarcity because there's never enough of anything to satisfy everybody's desire for relative um, status. And the new woke iteration of that is is painting white guys as the bad guys, you know, white civilization, anti-whiteness. They're, they're going all the time with this, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is what white culture is. It's oppressive, et cetera, et cetera. And so it is no accident that you have the intersectional young black woman. So this is, you know, woke culture, the oppressed, the people who don't have all the goodies and resources. But in, you know... As I explained in the Lewis C.K. thing, you know, you go back to the state of nature, you simplify things to to define the principles of what's going on. Wealth needs to be earned, innovated, created from nothing. You know, we transform the natural world into things that we find useful. And that's and then, you know, we represent it with money. Money's a representation of value so that we can understand it and trade it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but essentially, the things that we need are transformed from the state of nature into things that we find valuable. And uh, as I explained in the Lewis CK video, if I'm part of a little tribe of 150 people and I go into the woods and I cut down some trees and I make a little hut out of it, was it given to me? No, I made it. <laughs> so, so if someone else doesn't make their own hut and I don't make them a hut, have I denied them their wishes? Because, see, when you have this wish analogy, it just means that I click my fingers and the hut, the hut never cost me anything, never cost me any time, never cost me um, resources, energy, blah, blah, blah. Didn't cost me degradation of my body, blah, blah, blah. So there's no cost, no risk, no investment, no work, no invention, no nothing. I just click my fingers and get a hut and the intersectional little woke girl here is going to be like, well, you've just withheld huts from the rest of the tribe. <laughs> um, and you know what? This is really the real world manifestation of this propaganda. If somebody decides to loot a Gucci or a Macy's or a Nike, because that makes sure that that person eats, that makes sure that that person has clothes, that's reparations. That is reparations. Anything they want to take, take it because these businesses have insurance. They're going to get their money back. This is reparations, so we're going to take your stuff. Reparations for what? For the fact that you never invented shoes and Apple products and Gucci's and things? <laughs> but so you've got the propaganda and this is the real world effect. And so it's not it's not hard to see when you're pumping out all this stuff into the minds of your children where we're getting the effects of civilization that we are. Um, but yeah, it's all propaganda. The trick is to see it. I, I could, you know, like I said, it's like reading The Matrix for me these days. I just saw 10 seconds of this and I'm like, oh, cool. There's like a young black woman who basically is the Disney representation of Andrea Casio Cortez, AOC, the young intersectional black revolutionary that's just going to give all the free stuff to everybody and overthrow the oppressive capitalist white heteronormative society um, that is oppressing them. But in reality, it's just the laws of nature. And like I've said before, you have certain behaviors that have certain outcome, outcomes. You don't have those behaviors, don't get the outcomes. It's really that simple. But they don't want to comprehend that reality. They think that you're actually doing it to them. You know, scarcity is imposed on us by white people and white men, and we need to we need to lead a revolution against them, and then there'll be enough for everybody forever, and we'll all feel great, and we won't get butt hurt that someone's got more than us, and for some reason, status hierarchies will go away, and forever and ever, amen. <laughs> oh, God.